Well, clearly the right option was option A. In this video, we're gonna be going over how to improve your decision making in football so that you're not making the wrong decision in matches or in practices so that you have to go chase the ball down every five minutes. That's coming up next. All right, guys, welcome to Simply Soccer. If you haven't been here before, my name is Dave, and on this channel, we release weekly soccer tip technique and training videos to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. So if you have not already, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any of the content that we release. Now, like that little dramatization at the beginning suggests, making the wrong decisions in your matches more often than not is going to lead to you being a very ineffective player. But the good news about this is the opposite is also true. If you make good decisions more times than not, you're gonna be an extremely effective player. So in this video, we're going over how to make better decisions in soccer. So the first one, and this is so important when you're thinking of soccer as a whole or a lot of things as a whole, and I mention it all the time, but it's your confidence. And a lack of confidence is what's going to bring about bad decisions because when you panic, you're nervous, and you're not totally certain in what you're doing, that's when you are indecisive and make bad decisions decisions. So the first thing you want to be working on is becoming someone who is a very confident player on the pitch. Now I also mention this a lot, confidence is a skill that can be worked on. So if you consciously and actively work on your confidence on the pitch, you can do that through repetition, you can do that with practices like visualization, you can start creating different identities for yourself, one that's more confident, but you need to start working on this skill because all of this other stuff I'm going to go over is not as powerful as actually being confident in yourself and certain in your ability to make good decisions. Number two is remaining calm, keeping a cool head in pressure situations. Now, confidence is gonna take you a, a real long way in your decision making, but there are even gonna be moments, if you're a confident player, where you feel the pressure. And so you need to remain calm in those pressure situations and be able to make the right decision even when the pressure is on. So this could be you're getting closed down quickly and you need to make the right pass, you can't afford to lose the ball. This could be you have only a split second to play the right ball and it could be the difference between your team scoring or not. This could be the difference between, you know, your team has one last chance in the game and which is the better option, shooting or playing it out wide so you can get across it. You know, in these pressure situations when you're really feeling it, if you can keep a cool head, you're gonna make the best decision more times than not. And more importantly, you're not gonna make a mistake in those situations. How many times, even at the professional level, have you seen a player panic when they've been closed down and lose the ball only for the other team to then counter and go on to score? Now, I actually made a video recently on how to calm your nerves and relax more in football while you're in a game. So I will have that come across now and link it down below because I think it's really important to keep your cool in those pressure situations. And in that video, I go over how you can actually work on this and train it uh, so that when you do find yourself in those situations, you know how to handle it. Third is you need to be analyzing pro matches often. Now, what do I mean when I say analyze pro matches? I don't mean you're just watching them passively. Now, I do that all the time. You know, when my teams play, um, I will watch the game and I'm a fan, you know, I'm cheering, I'm getting excited. I'm not really analyzing all the tactical stuff or what the players are doing, but because I've done that a lot in my life and I have deliberately analyzed a lot of pro matches, you know, I still see the patterns when I'm watching the game. And if you really want to improve your decision making, look at the decision making the best players are making when they're in these situations, when they're in matches. And that way you can ask yourself, hmm, why did Modric make that pass and not that one? Um, you can look at old footage of people like Pirlo and go, why did he make that decision? You know, what led him to making that decision? Or when they make a mistake, you could even say to yourself, what could they have done differently so that that mistake didn't happen? And the more you bring this stuff into your awareness, the more it's going to click and connect for you when you're in your own practices, when you're in your own matches, and you're going to be able to make better decisions because you're using the decisions that professionals are making and bring them into your game, if that makes sense. So you wanna analyze pro matches often, see the decisions that players, especially in your position, are making. So if you uh, are center mid, watch some of the best center mids and see what they do in different situations. And again, ask why, always ask why. Why did they do that? Why didn't they do this? What could they have done better? What was so great about that? You ask those questions, you're gonna get good answers and you're going to learn 
what the best decision in each situation is. Lastly, guys, it's not enough just to know what the best decision is. You need to practice making them. So I went over this a little bit in keeping your head and remaining calm, but put yourself in pressure situations often in training so that you can actually see if you're gonna be able to make the right decision when you're under pressure. So that means when you're in tight space, that means when you're being closed down, that means in any situation where there's pressure on you. You need to experience these moments. You need to practice these situations because the more you do in your training, the more rep Repetition, remember, confidence, uh, one of the biggest ways to grow in confidence in anything is repetition, 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 right? So put yourself in those moments. You can practice with a friend and say, hey, I want you to practice closing me down immediately when I receive the ball. And you could play it off a wall, receive the ball, and have your friend close you down and actually try and take it. Practice those kind of situations often because if you do, not only will you get good at being able to deal with the pressure on you, you'll get so good at doing that that you'll be able to focus more on what decision you're gonna make. You'll be able to focus more on what pass you wanna make. You'll be able to not worry so much about that because you'll be committed to muscle memory um, that you'll be able to think about different things like where's my teammates run, you know, where's the open space and all that stuff. So practice those situations often, not just in your team training, but if you can get a mate, if you can get a friend to help you in those situations, help you put pressure on you, um, that's only gonna make you better at this. All right, guys, so that's just some quick ideas on how to have better decision making in football. Obviously, you need to get out there and practice these things for you to actually see some results in your game. Now, question of the day is on a scale of one to 10, how good is your decision making right now? And I also want you to let me know Wherever you are on the scale, what are you going to start doing to move that number forward and get to a, a better level of decision making? Let me know all of that down below in the comments. Guys, thank you once again for tuning into this video. I really, really appreciate it so much. Make sure you hit that like button and check out the other two videos I've put up on screen so you can continue to learn, improve your game, and stand out on the pitch. Thanks once again, and I'll see you in the next video.